Hello and welcome to the support show episode number seven. Today we're going to go over wasteboard leveling and work holding. Uh, my name is Nick. I'm one of the tech support guys. We have these live webinars every other Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We also upload them to YouTube after the show, so you can take a look if you weren't able to make it for the live show. The first thing that I'm going to go over is wasteboard leveling and why it's important. Here I've got two different types of wasteboards. I have an MDF one, and then I also have uh, one of our threaded tables. These are for the Nomad. As you can tell, they're a little bit smaller. Um, these are eight by eight. All this information works on both a Nomad and a Shapoko. The first thing that we're going to do, let me go ahead and screen share here. I'm going to pull up a fresh project in Carbide Create. So what I want to do first is we're going to go into the job setup. And I'm going to set up something a little bit larger than what my wasteboard is. So I'm going to do, since these are eight inches, I'm going to do these eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Stock thickness doesn't really matter, but since we're running MDF, I'll just leave it on 0.75. I'm going to change my retract height down a little bit to 0.2. So you see, I have the machine set up as a Nomad. Now, one really important thing that we need to change is this toolpath zero. Instead of lower left, we're going to set it as center. And the reason why we do that is because I want to mill out the whole wasteboard and the machine knows where the center of it is um, based in carbide motion when you do rapid travel. So instead of me trying to guess where the center is and trying to guess all that kind of stuff, I'm going to let the machine do that for me and let carbide motion do that for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it as center and we're gonna go ahead and press okay. You'll see it changed everything here. My zero point is in the center right here and it's shown by this checkered circle. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a rectangle or a square. So I can just put any size in here and then I'm gonna go ahead and do an eight inch by eight inch and done. And now another thing that you can do in Carbide Create is you can do a uh, an alignment. So that's what this logo down here is. We're gonna click align vectors and I'm gonna align it uh, to the stock, which is this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I actually need to make this a little bit larger. We're gonna bring these to 8.25 and 8.25, okay? And that will give me the square around the whole wasteboard so that when I mill it out, it's going to cut the entire thing so we don't have any valleys or anything of that sort. And the the whole point in doing a wasteboard leveling is because the wasteboard itself is pretty flat, but it's also not level to the spindle until you do this. So this is where you get when you're V carving and you see like the little dog bone ears when you're cutting something that is not level, or you'll see that areas are cut deeper than others. And sometimes it'll show up as when you're cutting through your material, it may not cut through everywhere. So it's something that's pretty important to do. So I always recommend to do it when you first get your machine. So from there, we're going to go ahead and go into tool paths. And in the tool path, we want to do a pocket because we're going to mill out the whole entire of the wasteboard. So we're going to use current selection because our box is selected in orange. Now on this, we're going to want to set the max depth to two or three thou, so 0 0.003. And the reason why we do it so low is because we're not trying to completely mill out the, the wasteboard. We're just kind of leveling it out. So we're going to take off just a little layer of it. And the nice thing about this is that if let's say we level it out and it doesn't level the whole thing, we could set the zero again and level it again. And so you have this file where if you accidentally cut something, you could run this again and you're not taking, you know, an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch off of your wasteboard. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do Nomad 3 hardwood. And I'm going to select that 102 again. And you see all my information changed here. So step over what that is, is it's kind of like when you're mowing a lawn 
it's how much of the lawn you're overlapping when you do the lines uh, back and forth through it. So you can move this step over up to a hundred percent, which is like a, a, on this end mill, it'd be 0.125, but you want to go over a little bit of the previous section so that you make sure that everything is flat. If you don't do that, you don't overlap, you may get little lines in between each one, which would not be good. It wouldn't make it a uh, level. So, and the depth per pass, uh, we could we could leave it where it's at. It's not going to change anything since we're going to be cutting that full max depth uh, with that as well. So you can go ahead and press OK. It's going to recalculate. And you can see here that this cut is going to take 18 minutes. So we may not be able to see it in our simulation because we're cutting the whole thing. But one thing that that is kind of cool about this is that it's going to go basically from the center of your waste board and it's going to kind of cut in a square all the way out. And that's what exactly what we wanted to do. So from there, we'd save this tool path and then we would just load this into carbide motion. And in carbide motion, what you're going to do is when you go to jog, you're going to go to rapid position and in rapid position, you're going to be able to set center and it'll travel to the center of your wasteboard. You're gonna set your X and Z there. Once you've set X and Z, or sorry, sorry, X and Y, um, you can set your Z after that. So X and Y, rapid travel, and you're good to go. So after you've done that, we're gonna you'd run that and you'd have a flattened wasteboard. Now, one question that I do get often is the the machine is going to come with an MDF wasteboard. The Shapokos come with MDF as well. There is an upgrade for the Nomads that is a threaded table that's aluminum. You can level the aluminum wasteboard. I don't typically recommend to do that just because aluminum's not super easy to like if you you cut it too deep or you do something you make a mistake on it it's not something that is super easily replaced and it's it's a lot more expensive than a sheet of mdf but the one thing that you can do is i usually will take a piece of acrylic or something of that sort and i'll place it down in the area that i'm going to be cutting on and i'll level that as my wasteboard i like using acrylic because it's similar with using double-sided tape and that kind of stuff in comparison to like MDF, double-sided tape doesn't really work very well on there. You can use it, but it's not great. But if you use double-sided tape on a, the threaded waste board with acrylic, it sticks really well. And that's how I cut a lot of my jewelry. And the other nice thing about doing an acrylic waste board is if let's say I cut out um, let's say I'm doing some earrings that are heart shaped. I can cut that heart shape out of acrylic and just snap it straight in. And that's basically, instead of using a double-sided tape, I would just clamp a little side of it down so that I can engrave it. I'm going to go on to the next subject, which is um, basically holding your material down. So you can see here, I've got a lot of different items a lot of different things. These are the two waste boards that I was talking about earlier. We've got the threaded table and then we've got the standard MDF. Now, the nice thing about both of these is that they're really versatile for pretty much anything you want to do. If you're doing something where let's say you don't want to use a threaded table, but you still want to have threads, we do carry a couple things that are like these. These are threaded inserts. You basically drill a hole into the MDF and then you're going to screw this into it. And then you're gonna screw your clamps or whatever else on top here. Um, so it's basically like turning one of these MDF waste boards into a threaded table. It's just MDF and which is again, I think a little bit easier to replace. So if it's something where you're doing different kinds of designs all the time and it's not something that you have just set up and you need a unique pattern that these don't have, you could do something like this. Now, the different types of clamps that are out there, there's an infinite types of clamps. And I mean, they're all designed differently. These are just some of the ones that we carry. We've got like the tiger claws. These are the compact tiger claws. Um, these ones 
come with the Shapoko are um, they they come in one of our kits as well. So these ones, they're nice because they're made out of plastic. So if you're doing a cut, if you run into this, you're not going to hurt your end mill. It's just going to cut right through it because it's just plastic. These aluminum ones, I like these a lot because they hold very well. And the, the thing about these is it's kind of like asking a, an artist what paintbrush to use when you're you're doing a painting that's kind of the same as work holding it depends on what you're doing it depends on what you like to do like on my shapoko that i have at home i use a cantilever style and a stop style uh clamp and the reason why i use that is because that's what i've i've always used and that's the style that i'm used to so it's it's not that it's, I mean, it is better on certain things, but if you're just clamping a piece of wood down, any of these will hold. These are what come in, in a T-track. So then you would basically clamp this down to this. This is the ones that typically come with the Nomad. Now, these, these, these type like the Tiger Claw are nice because you can kind of put them next to your stock and touch it. And then when you tighten these, these screws down, it's going to pull this forward so that you get a better grip on what you're cutting now one thing that that i see really often is when people put their clamps onto a a piece of stock is they'll they'll clamp something down with let's say this this piece here's my stock they'll clamp down like this and if you see that that angle is not going to hold anything it's going to slide right out but if we either flip it over like this and we put a screw through here, you have a lot more force coming down on it, holding it, and it's not going to be able to come out. So it is very important to figure out how you want this hooked up or how you want these to hold these down. And if you ever have a question about the best practices for work holding with this kind of stuff, you're more than welcome to shoot over an email to our support team so that we can take a look and see kind of what you're doing and go over maybe some options on work holding. Because when, when I first started, I only had a set of these or a set of these, and I really didn't know any better than that. So the, the style that I, I use, like I said, is I use acrylic with double-sided tape. Well, recently I've gone to using one of our super hold kits, which is masking tape with super glue. And so how this work holding type works is that you're, you're basically taking a piece of masking tape and you're putting it down on your wasteboard. And then you're putting a piece onto your stock and then you're super gluing those together. So the, the advantage to that is that it's really easy to remove. And it's also very easy to put on. So you don't have to really mess around with clamps. You're not going to have to do any of that kind of stuff. So I definitely recommend this style because it's, it's really quick and really easy. I actually did a larger project a few weeks back that was a dog bowl um, holder and the dog bowl, dog bowl holder, the whole thing I did masking tape on because I have a, uh, they sell this stuff for using on vinyl cutters that they use as a material that you pick up the vinyl with. And it's just basically like a foot wide sheet of masking tape. And so I was able to do that whole sheet in, in two pieces and it, it was very quick. And then what this stuff is here, this is an accelerant. And so what this, you basically put the super glue down. I put it on one side and then I put the accelerant on the other and then I press them together and this makes it dry instantly. Uh, I will say you got to be kind of careful with this stuff because if you get some of the super glue on your finger and then you get some of this on there, it is immediately dry. So definitely be careful with the, the super glue. I've, I've glued my fingers together more times than I'm willing to admit. But... From there, 
we've got wax this this wax works really great too especially with with metals like jewelry because i can heat it up real quick and basically press this down and hold it in this double-sided tape i had mentioned it a little bit earlier it doesn't work really great on mdf because since mdf is is particles it it doesn't stick really well to it I mean, you could probably use it for something if you're using like an, an MC etcher where you're just etching the top of it. Definitely recommend using it with acrylic or metals. The So what I'll do is, like I said, I, I basically put a piece of acrylic down. I, I surface the acrylic and then you're going to, you can go ahead and double side tape something down to that, which would be like a sheet of metal or something of that sort. I, I feel that this, you get a little bit flatter of an adhesion so if you're doing something like I do a lot of jewelry with like littler earrings. And if I'm using a PCB bit, if I use something like the double-sided tape, a lot of the times my cuts aren't really even because it's not completely flat. And that's why it's so important to level your wasteboard before you, you try to do any of this kind of stuff, because you're going to make sure that your machine is level to your wasteboard. But but yeah, and there's there's different versions of this wax too. You can get it in different colors. There's different adhesions that you can get there. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of different forms of this. So it's it's definitely a, a really versatile tool to have. Um, we can go on to the next one. So the masking tape, super glue, this stuff. Um, I can do a quick little show of how it works. What we're gonna do is we're going to tape up our wasteboard and then let's see if i have something that i can masking tape down here uh i guess we'll use one of these clamps so i'm going to put masking tape on the back side of that and then i'm going to take a little bit hopefully the super glue is open it is so put a little bit of super glue on here. Set that down. We're going to take our accelerant. I'm going to spray that on here. And usually I would do it the other way around because the accelerant gets on everything. I mean, it's just kind of like alcohol. So it's not going to hurt anything. You can wipe it off. But um, and then you're just going to basically press those down. Give it a good press. Hold, and from there, you can see, <laughs> like literally shaking the table. It, it will not. It's it's super glued on. So this is how I would hold something that's flat. And you saw how quick I did that. I, it, it was probably faster for me to do that than it would be for me to get an Allen key out and to do all that. And once we're done, it's just masking tape. So the masking tape peels right off from the actual item. Let me see if I can get. And if it doesn't, you can always get from under the, uh, the wasteboard and you see um, there's no, there's no super glue. There's no damage or anything like that because all your super glue is, is stuck in between your, pieces here and you can see it's it's instant that it dries so this this style is is really cool i think that it's again it's one of my favorite ways to hold items down especially flat items so that's definitely a another choice that you can use again we have our clamps depending on what you're doing they're all good for something different especially different shapes now Another thing that I, I want to go over, if you are doing, let's say, so for a while I was doing dog collar tags, like the little bone shaped ones. So if you're doing something like that and you know you're going to do the same item over and over and you're using something like an MC etcher, you don't want to have to redo anything like that. I usually will use something like one of these MDF boards and, or you could use a supplemental so you're not cutting into your actual wasteboard, but I will cut out a, 
the same shape, like I said earlier about the heart, but I'll cut out the same item and basically create a pocket so that I have like, let's say this little hole, I would create this and then I would snap my part into there. And then I don't have to worry about it moving left, right, up, down if I get it tight enough in there. And you could either use something like this. A, a lot of the times, especially if I'm just etching, I'll throw a piece of masking tape on the top and the bottom, and then I'll etch the center out. And using something like that, I can get the exact same spot every single time if I'm doing the same project over and over. And this is across the board for different machines. I I mean, on uh, I have a, a few customers out there that set a rapid position on a section of their machine and they have different portions where they just rapid position there, they clamp something down and that's what they mill. And so if they do have the same item over and over, they can do it repeatedly the same way each time and not have to do a whole new setup every time they do it. So that's one part of workflow that I think that is overlooked a lot. A lot of people worry about the speed of their cuts and that kind of stuff. To me, the most amount of time that I spend is setting up where my project is going to go on my machine and how I'm going to hold it down. And one thing that you want to make sure too, that when you're doing your designs is that you design something with edges so that it goes around these and make sure that you're using tabs if you're cutting something completely out and you're clamping on the edges. The essential clamps are great. These things, and like I said, they're they're great because if if they get hit with an end mill, you're not going to destroy your end mill. And I would rather destroy a whole set of these than a whole set of end mills. The question was, do you need tabs with this tape and super glue method? I, I don't typically use them because the whole thing is being held down, but it depends on what you're cutting out. I know that if you're cutting something larger, like let's say you were cutting a, a quarter inch of aluminum, I would probably still put tabs in there just in case, but I think that, that the double-sided tape, I mean, even on some of the larger machines that, that I've seen people cut with this, uh, super glue masking tape, they use it to hold some pretty hefty parts down. What sort of tools do folks use to cut tabs? Me personally, I either use a little handsaw or I'll use a jigsaw to cut them out. Those, those seem to be my favorite things. I know that a lot of people just use a little tiny wood saw, one of those single bladed ones. A Dremel, I've seen people use before just with a little saw wheel. Yeah, I have seen a, a router tool too. That That's definitely a good point, uh, using a router with a bearing guided flush uh, cutting tool. This was episode number seven, and we went over wasteboard leveling and work holding. We have these live webinars every Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and we upload them to YouTube after the show. And if you have any questions, concerns, anything of that sort, feel free to shoot us over an email. Our support, we're always happy to help.